In this lesson, we're going to talk about the sum of a geometric series. So what is a series? We already know what an arithmetic series is. A, a series is when you take a list of numbers and you add them all up. That's a sum. The sum is adding them all up. And today we're going to talk specifically about geometric ones. A geometric, the general form of a geometric series when we put in plus signs, so our first term is an a, our next term is an a times r, and then a r squared, and so on, uh, all the way, all the way to the end, whatever our n term is. The formula for the sum of n terms of a geometric series is this formula here. So this is a formula that you need to memorize. Um, what if r equals 1? Well, if r was equal to 1, we would have a denominator of 0 there. That's why we have a restriction here. r cannot equal 1. This formula can be developed in a similar way to the arithmetic series formula. So you could develop it yourself from our last lesson. Um, you can try to figure it out on your own if you're a problem solver, solver or in the textbook that we're using there is there is a derivation of this formula there that you can look at. If you expand the above equation, a different formula will emerge, and this is also shown. So there, that's just some information about the formula itself. Today we're not going to concentrate on where did the formula come from. This formula right here, where did it come from? We're not focusing on that. We're just going to jump right into some examples. Example one, find S8 for each of the following series using proper formulae. All right, so is it geometric, first of all? That's what we have to decide. Is it geometric? If it's geometric, you'll have a common ratio. And remember, the common ratio is some term, like the third term, divided by the term before it. And you do that a few times to make sure it's consistent. And in this case, when we take a term and we divide it by the term before it, what do we get? we get a negative three. So our R value is a negative three. So let's go up to our new formula here. And we always start by writing out the formula that helps you to memorize it faster if you, if you write it out from scratch each time. A bracket R to the power of N minus one over R minus one. So let's sub in, what do we know? Well, we know that we're looking for the eighth term S8, so I'm looking for the sum of eight terms. My A is the first term. There's the A value there is two. Ratio, we got that over here. It's a negative three, so I'm gonna put a bracket around it. And then the exponent is an N. Now remember N is eight minus one. So it was important that I put a bracket around that negative three up there. I don't need to down here because it's just a simple subtraction line. But because it's negative three to the power of eight, I wanna make sure that I'm including the negative with the power. So it's uh, negative three, eight times negative three, negative three, negative three, which is going to make a positive. And if I hadn't written it with the bracket, if I just wrote it like this, maybe I would have forgotten that and I would have just done negative three to the power, or three to the power of eight and then made my answer negative, which would be wrong. Order of operations, what do we do first? We have to be bed mass, we have to do the brackets first. And even within these brackets, I have something I have to do first, and that's negative three to the power of eight. Negative three to the power of eight is 6,561 over negative three minus one is negative four. So now doing uh, completing the numerator and the denominator we can do all this in one step, I think, negative 3,280. So that is the sum of the first eight terms of this series. So it's called a series because instead of a comma in between each term, instead of a comma being there, we just have a plus, we have a plus or a minus sign. So we added up all the terms and we ended up with a negative 3,280. How about B? Again, we're looking for S8, so let's start with the formula. The more often you write out the formula, the faster you will memorize it. R to the power of N minus one over R minus one. N this time is still eight. We're looking for the sum of eight terms. Our A is the first term, which is 200. 
What's our common ratio? What's our common ratio? So take any term, say term three is 50, divide it by the one before it, 100. And try again, that should equal another pair. And it should equal every pair. And it is one half. So one half, again, I'm gonna put a bracket around one half. My power is an eight minus one over r minus one. So why am I putting why am I putting a bracket around the one half? It's positive. And in the previous example, I told you I put the bracket here because of the negative. I didn't want to mess up my signs there. If I wrote one half to the power of eight, technically that's saying one times one times one times eight of them times one over a single two. Because the one, the way I've written it here, the eight is only touching the one. So technically that's still one half but by putting a bracket around it then the whole thing is sorry eight the whole thing technically should be written out eight times one half one half eight times and so on so that's why we need the bracket there okay back to our question 200 one half to the power of eight so if you're using the fraction button on your calculator you can but we already know that one to the power of eight is one 2 to the power of 8, you can do that on your calculator. 2 to the power of 8 is 256 minus 1 all over 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. So now we're going to uh, keep working with fractions. We have to because there's no decimals in the question. We have to work with fractions. With the fraction button on your calculator, you can put this whole piece in right here in the brackets. 1 over 256 minus 1 and then you can multiply that by 200 and your calculator should keep it all in fraction form for you. And the fraction button on your calculator, remember it's like this, A, B, C usually, that's your fraction button. And if you don't know how to use it, I would you should look it up on YouTube. Type in the type of calculator you have and say how do I use my fraction button. It's one of my favorite buttons on my calculator. There are lots of buttons we have to use like the sine button or the cosine button or the exponent button, you don't have to use the fraction button. So I really like it, it makes my life easier as does my memory button, I, I use that a lot too. And again, that's another thing that you would have to look up for your specific calculator, how to use it. Okay, back on track here. So our numerator is now, um, well, we put all of this together. Well, look, I, I was gonna skip some steps, but I won't. Just in case it's the first time using the fraction button on your calculator, let's put all the steps in here. So we're getting negative 255, and you don't really need your calculator because um, one is just 256 over 256. So we're just um, doing a little subtraction here, 256. And we're gonna divide all that by half, but instead of doing divided by half, I'm gonna write it like this, divided by negative one half over here. Next line. So we multiply what we have by 200, and your calculator might show this to you as a mixed number, so you're gonna to have to hit your shift fraction button there to get it as an improper fraction, because they're a little easier to work with when we're doing calculations. Negative 6,375 over 32. Now instead of dividing by half, I'm going to invert and multiply by negative 2 over 1. Now I'm running out of space. I'm just going to press pause here and erase some of this work that I have in the middle here. I'm going to erase all that. So up we go here and we're going to have our answer here. The sum of eight terms is equal to 6,375 over 16 because these switch colors here these just cancel out i divide this by two i get a 16 divide this by two it's a one and the two negatives make positive all right next question example two find the sum of this series and round to the nearest tenth this question says round to the nearest tenth because what we'll find here is most of our calculators aren't going to be able to handle all the decimals that the number of decimal places are sorry the number of fraction spots we would need 
All right, let's start with her formula. S, um, S subscript N equals A times R to the power of N minus one over R minus one. So what have we got that we can sub in here? Well, we've got our first term, there's A. What about our common ratio? Our common ratio is equal to four over one. I did these two here, or I did these two. We can pick any pair, one fourth divided by one sixteenth. So let's just, let's work with this one because it's a little harder. This one's easy, it's not gonna be a four. Let's make sure the other one's four. That's one fourth divided by one sixteenth, which is one fourth times 16 over one, so one there. That's 16 over four, which is of course four. So our common ratio is a four. So we can sub that in and we can sub our A value in, but we don't have N. And that's a problem because N is used more than once here. A is 1 16th. R is four, and I don't know. So I can simplify a little bit, but I end up with 1 16th, four to the power of N minus one over three. And that's where I'm stuck. I need N. I have too many unknowns here. So I'm going to have to find N how can I find n? How can I how can I determine how many terms are in this list here? And we've done questions similar to this. Well, I'm going to use another formula. I'm going to use my geometric general term formula. Let's see if that helps. Remember what T n stands for? That means it's a general term or it's the final term. So 1 16th is term one, 1 4th is term two, one is term three, four is term four. So this last one here is term N. I don't know which one it is. So I the last one goes in here, 65,536 equals A is 1 16th. Let me make some room here. R is four. And then N minus one. So now I have one unknown, but it's N. So now I've got, now I'm gonna be able to figure out what N is. First step is to divide both sides by 1 16th. To cancel those out. Divide by 1 16th. Again, a good time to use your um, fraction button on your calculator. We're getting one million. 48,576 equals four to the power of N minus one. Now what we have to do is make our bases match. I need to write this number with a base of four. So this is four to the power of what? So you're gonna have to do some trial and error on your calculator. Four to the power of five, four to the power of six, so keep going. Press pause until you come up with a number there. So you got four to the power of 11 equals four to the power of n minus one. Now that our bases match, we can ignore them because n minus one must equal 11. These two have to equal each other. So I'm just gonna look at that little equation. 11 has to equal n minus one. Add one to both sides and 12 is n. Now I can go over here and put in a 12 for my n values. I'm looking for the sum of 12 terms. That's going to be 1 16th times, okay, we get another big number here, 4,194,000. 303. Oops, wow, hopefully you guys saw what I did here. I jumped, I wrote uh, 11 here. This should be, let me change my color way back. I hate it when I do this. I don't really want to record the whole video over again. So, 4 to the power of 10. 
So 10 equals n minus 1, 11 equals n, 11, 11, 11. That's why we have this number here. Okay, sorry about that. Divided by 3. And when you try to put this into your calculator, you will see most calculators, they can't show or they can't display the really large fraction here, which you, if you're trying to put this whole section into your calculator, most of our calculators won't do that. And that would be why the question said round to the nearest tenth. So we're going to round to the nearest tenth here and we get 87,381 um, nearest tenth, so 0.3, I guess, yes. So that is the sum of the series for example two. And that's the end of our lesson on the sum of a geometric series.